Philippians 4, 10 to 13. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care for me had flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Praise God. Verse 12. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer needs. Verse 13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Now, in other words, after all this hustling and bustling, my strength of productivity still don't diminish. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Blessed be the reading of God's word. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise be the name of the Lord. I want to speak with us on this subject. He's got his value on me. Let me tell yourself and your neighbor. God's value is on me. God put his value on me. Praise God. Father, bless your word. Bless your people. Mighty God, I thank you, O oh God, for your word of revelation. I give you praise for your presence. Spirit of the living God, do that which you have proposed to do here today. And let your name alone be glorified. I thank you, O oh God, for every works of the enemies that has been destroyed. I give you praise, O oh God, for terminating every assignment of hell. Blessed be your name for putting the enemies to shame and giving us victory. Hallelujah. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Praise be the name of the Lord. He's got his value on you. Praise God. Uh, quickly, without wasting much of our, much of our time, uh, please you must understand that uh, every now and again, you know, we have to come to uh, the, the substratum of what's actually, you know, put value on us. And where do we have our values from? Praise God. Uh, quickly, the main purpose of the book of uh, Philippians, you know, we are invited to draw closer to Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. You know, and also to draw closer to one another. Are we together here? Uh, that no matter what we are facing, praise God, we are not alone. Are we together here? Irrespective of what we are dealing with, we are not alone. Now, furthermore, in the book of, uh, in the purpose of the book of Philippians, Paul wrote this epistle to express joy and encouragement, you know, to the believers. In doing God's work, in other words, irrespective of the challenge, the ups and downs, the obstacles. You know, he's uh, writing to the church that we are still, you know, we should not, you know, relent in our responsibility to the things of God, you know, irrespective of what we are up against. Praise God. Paul writes, you know, to those in Philippi, encouraging them, you know, encouraging the church, you know, uh, church unity, you know, uh, the doctrinal purity, and also spiritual maturity. Uh, please, you must understand that uh, Paul the Apostle, you know, he was in prison in Rome. And while in prison in Rome, he wrote a letter of encouragement. Child of God, here is a man who has been imprisoned by Nero. He's been imprisoned, you know, and then awaiting to be executed, praise God. While he is in that prison, he restricted, you know, he's writing to people who are free outside and giving them encouragement. Are we together here? Yes, he was in prison bodily, but child of the living God, his mind was not in prison. Yes, he was in prison bodily. You know, his letters, his writings were not in prison. Are we together here? Uh, it doesn't matter what circumstances may have locked you into. 
please have come to speak to you as a witness that uh, if your mind is out, your body is coming out. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, Father God. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Uh, I submit to you, there is no way, you know, to have a proper concept of God and lose sight of your own God-given strength. Are we together here? Uh, the question now becomes, uh, how is our concept of God being expressed? How do we express this concept? Because the fact is, uh, we all have our indocetric kind of concept of God. My concept of God is not your concept of God. Uh, and that's the reason why anytime we come together like this and we fellowship together, we unleash our individual revelation that now give us the fullness of uh, of God, which means uh, if you don't come to church, uh, you deprive me of the God that you know, or of the side of God that you know. If I don't come to church, uh, I deprive you of the side of God uh, that you know you expect to experience. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. And that's what the Bible says: that do not, you know, uh, uh, do not, uh, do, do not, you know, uh, deprive you know one another of the presence of the living God as we come together to worship. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Now, the question is, how is this concept expressed? Because whatever that happens to us spiritually, you know, has to be expressed somehow, you know, in our physicality. Are we together here? Uh, through our own cognitive energy or through our ability to evaluate the things of the living God. Pastor, what are you talking about? Uh, if I believe that God has forgiven me, if I believe wholeheartedly, that God has forgiven me, then I must learn how to forgive myself. <laughs> I praise God. There is no way you can say that you know that God has forgiven you and you don't know how to forgive yourself. Praise be the name of the Lord. Uh, there is no way I can utterly believe uh, that God has forgiven me and I can't forgive myself. It doesn't make any sense. Because whatever is happening in the spiritual realm has to be appropriate cognitively by the person in question. In other words, you know, because it has to get into my mind, until it gets into into my mind, then I cannot be able to appropriate it correctly. Glory to God. Paul prayed that the eyes of our understanding being enlightened, you know, that we may know. Glory to God. You know, uh, what that tells me is that uh, there are some things that God has done in our spirit that has to come to our mind. Praise be the name of the Lord. In order for you to be able to express it. Are we together here? Because it is only through, you know, your cognitive ability that you can express what God is doing or what God have done in your spirit. Praise God. Now, this is why you, uh, that this is why the things that operate in the spirit has to, you know, has to change our mind individually because uh, if your mind is not changed, my, my brothers and my sisters, uh, then your actions cannot change. If your mind don't change, your action cannot change, praise God. Now, even though, you know, to understand the will of God for your life, uh, your, you have to be able to have a change of mind. Because it takes, you know, it takes the, that transformation of the mind, praise God, you know, from the world to be able to connect to the things of God. For you to understand the will of God in your life, that means God, you have to allow God, praise God, to be able to express, you know, uh, to allow God to walk in your spirit as your spirit talks to your mind. Are we together here? Uh, God, how, you know, you have to allow God, you know, uh, to be able to uh, that express that consciousness in your mind uh, for you to be able to change your mind. Because until you change your mind, uh, you can't change your life. Until you change the mind based on what God has put in your spirit, praise God, you cannot change your environment. 
one of the greatest challenge of a child of God, you know, is when the child of God does not know what lies within him. When you don't know what lies within you, then you cannot be able to really, you know, uh, express, you know, what is there. Uh, when I walk into an arena, if I walk into a room and I said to them, and I say, well, I have God. I am a child of the living God. Now, how is this expressed? How is this expressed? I mean, if I said, uh, I am a child of God, and then how is this expressed in my attitude? You know, how does it, how does it, you know, how do I express that, you know, within the, in, in the midst of the people that I, you know, that I find myself? If I say I have God, you know, he is my shield. He is my rock. My, he's, he's, he's the lifter up of my head. He's my fortress. He is my victory. I have God, which means there, there had to be some element of how I feel about myself when I declare that I am a child of the living God. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Now, uh, one of my writers, you know, uh, Nathan Brandon. Nathan Brandon writes, and I quote from his book, a quote from here. He said, there is no value judgment more important to man, you know, no factor more decisive in his psychological development and motivation than the estimate he passes on himself, unquote. In other words, the estimate then is expressed by each and every one of us. Uh, uh, this estimate, beloved, uh, it hinges on our feeling. Now, the way we feel is critically important. I'm dealing on a subject, understand that God has put value on you. Praise God. Because God can place a value on you. If you do not know that there's a value upon your life, you will devalue yourself. Oh, the devil is a liar. Oftentimes, we don't talk about how we feel on the inside. You know, it's not something that we verbalize. Praise God. Now, uh, there, are, there are times where we find ourselves in the midst of certain people. And then we find ourselves in the midst of them. And we don't say nothing. We just keep quiet. And they're all talking. We just nod and agree with everybody in a way. And there are also some times we find ourselves in some circle of people. And we feel in secured, you know, because maybe there are some kind of elites, you know, in a way. Uh, and again, sometimes also we find ourselves in the midst of some people, and then we are so, we are very expressive. We just speak our mind, you see, because we feel that I can talk here. Praise God. Please, you must understand that the estimate is expressed in how we feel about ourselves. I submit to you how you feel about yourself in, you know, uh, in front Raises every single aspect of your life. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. Uh, how you feel about yourself when around, you know, personalities. Uh, how you feel about yourself when you are around people whom you deem very important. Uh, you know, uh, how you feel about yourself when you are around certain people whom you have given so much power to. You see, uh, now you are asking yourself, how do I behave in the in, in the midst of these people i mean based on how i feel how should i act when i you know when i'm when i'm here and uh, uh, should i have an element of boldness or how do i act you know within the midst of this you know people that I, reg I regard so important now without being without being humanistic brothers and sisters uh, all of this is down to how you see yourself how you see yourself I mean, if we find yourself right now in the midst of, uh, you know, uh, presidents, you know, past presidents, how will you act? How will you conduct? How will you? How will you act in that? In that? In that midst? And if you find yourself in the midst of homeless people, how will you act? Would there be a difference to the way you act? Because you, I mean, because you feel that I'm around homeless people. You see, there are some people, right? They feel more important when they are around people they feel they are better than. Why some people, when they come in the midst of people whom they regard to be very important, they, they, they cringe in. Praise God. But God is saying, my value is on you. Now, a feeling that is so hard to identify or to isolate is often evident in everything that we do. Praise God. Many times when God is looking for boldness, 
uh, we tend to hide and retreat uh, because uh, we feel I am not good enough for God to use. I am not, you know, educated enough for God to use. I am not rich enough for God to put in that pedestal. Praise God. Sometimes when we should be feeling good, we are feeling sad. And we allow the external attitude of others to influence how we feel about ourselves. The emotions often result in if something is beneficial to us or whether something is threatened or threatened us. Glory to God. Uh, please, you must understand, oftentimes uh, it is the threats that we face that unleash God or the enormity of God's, you know, uh, involvement in what we go through. It is in the threats that you see God. Because as a child of God, every now and again, we are caught in between faith and fear. We are always caught in between faith and fear. But God is saying, I have worked with you long enough that I know you're going to stick by faith. Yes, fear is around the corner, but that is not what I've given you. What I've given you is faith. You hang on to faith long enough, fear has to fizzle away, fizzle out. Praise God. In the act of the apostle chapter 4, when the disciples wanted to de declare the word of God, they were, they were threatened by the Sanhedrin council, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. They were so threatened to the degree whereby, you know, somehow they were scared, praise God. And they said to, and they went into prayer. And as I said, they said, they said to God, God, give us boldness because we are being threatened by the external forces because they were trying to make you know, make them shout. They, they were trying to make them to shut up, not to talk about God. Are you listening to me? Uh, when Satan wants you, you know, what Satan wants to do is to shut your mouth. The Satan wants you to shut your mouth. Why? Because, uh, you know, so, and, and that's why he brings, he brings circumstances uh, and situations into your life to make you minimize uh, how you feel about yourself. Praise be the name of the Lord. Satan wants you to shut up. Satan wants you to cringe in. Satan wants you to cage in. Satan wants you, you know, to be completely out of your game. Are you listening to me? So that he can get you to back up when you are meant to march forward. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. What Satan wants to do is to shut you up when you need to open your mouth. The devil is a liar. He can get you, he wants to get you to completely and keep complaining instead of shouting praise be the name of the living God. Oh, the devil is a liar. Child of God, if you give in to Satan, then you shift the ground, you know, of your destiny. But the devil is a liar. Bible says, I have not given unto you the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. Praise be the name of the almighty God. All because how you see yourself. How you see yourself is important. How do you see yourself? Sometimes people will discard you. But whatever happens on the external must not find his way on you, into your inside. Glory be to the name of the Lord. This is critically important because a man's view of himself is necessarily implicit in all the value response of his life. Praise God. How you see yourself is God, you know, in God is critically, critically important. You can leave a particular town, but you can't leave yourself. You can change your environment, go somewhere else. It will be you in a new environment. You can't change yourself. Because you must learn to relinquish those things that make, those feelings that make you feel less of whom God have made you. Thank you, Father God. You can change your environment, but it's not going to make any difference until the issue is fixed. Praise God. The issue is not where you are externally, 
But where you are internally is what makes the entire difference in your life. It's not where you are. But where you are internally is what makes a difference. Now, a quote from Napoleon. Napoleon said, to understand a man psycholo psychologically, one must understand the nature and degree of his self-esteem and the standard by which this man judges himself. <laughs> Praise God. Now, Satan realizes the power of self-esteem. He understands that. Child of God, please you must understand that you can't blame anybody about how you feel. You can't blame anybody. I've come to understand, oftentimes when, you, when, I, when, I, when, when I deal with people, it's not what you actually do or what you say. It's how they are on the inside. Glory to God. How they are on the inside is the issue. Praise God. So you can't actually blame anybody for how you feel about yourself. And that is why it is called self esteem. Praise be the name of the Lord. In other words, in other words, the man you are with doesn't determine how you feel about yourself. The woman that you are with does not determine how you feel about yourself. The group of friends that you have doesn't determine how you feel about yourself. What Satan wants to do is to make you believe that someone out there has the power to determine how you feel about yourself. Oh, the devil is a liar. But when you, but when you extricate yourself from the feeling of others and their attitude towards you, praise God, and you connect to the power of the living God, you know, then automatically that power begins to work on the inside on how you should feel about yourself. Then you shake off the devil and say, you know what? I'm moving into the next chapter of my life. Praise be the name of the Lord. Child of the living God, what restricts us the most it's not what people say or what people do, but what restricts us, what, but what, what, what disadvantages us the most is how we feel on the inside. How we feel on the inside. This is critical now because uh, there is a basic need. That is why Satan has created pride, suggestion, and uh, intimidation. Praise God. Pride and intimidation, these are the, these are the tactics of the devil. Uh, because he wants you to either feel too much about yourself or too little about who you are. Uh, Paul was teaching in the book of Corinthians that we should not think highly of ourselves uh, than we ought to think. Glory to God. Uh, what, is, what God is teaching us here is uh, don't think more highly than you should. And don't think too low of yourself than you ought to. But whatever you do, think what I think about you. Praise be the name of the Lord. God is saying, see you the way I see you. Oh my God, thank you Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Don't see yourself the way you see yourself. Don't see yourself the way others see you. See you. But see yourself the way I see you. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. This is why God beckoned on us to be transformed and not to conform to this world. Are, you are we together here? Because the world wants us to conform to the dictate and in the particular certain way of the world system. That controls us from being unique individual that God has made us to be. Praise be the name of the Lord. This is why you don't, you know, spend uh, your life comparing yourself with other people. Because you are uniquely made by the living God. God has made us uniquely as we should. Now, the basic need here now is where Satan convinced Eve. Uh, Satan said to Eve, hello Eve. Uh, God doesn't want you to know certain things. Matter of fact, you are not as good as you think. There is something lacking, you know, that God don't want you to know. You know, which is the knowledge of good and evil. Praise God. 
Please, you must understand that everything that Adam and Eve need to know, God was going to tell them anyway. And everything they need to know for the, for, the, for the time and the season they were in, God had told them. And every other thing that they needed to know, God was going to show it to them anyway. Praise God. Uh, but you see, the, the, the fact is, uh, everything that God have aligned for them to know has to be in precept. Glory to God. But Satan came with a deception to make them believe that there's something that they ought to know that they don't know and, made them, and, and to make them seeking for what is not yet for them to know. Glory to God. And this is the reason why as parents we have to protect our children. Because you see, as parents, as parents, or as good parents rather, you know, uh, we, we know that I need to teach my children certain things. Praise God. And a child is growing up with an innocent mind. Now, this is, not, this is not innocent. I'm talking about innocence. Praise God. Now, this child have, you know, is growing with a pure tranquility of mind, you know, with innocence. Glory to God. Now, what you don't want to do is to teach that child certain things before the child come of age. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. Because you know that, yes, my child needs to know this, but it's not yet time. Praise God. So, you, have, you know, you have to pace it. When he's five, he, will know, she will, he or she will know this. When she's ten, you know, then that when it's 12, 15, 18, you already pays up. Now, what you don't want to do is to expose your child to somebody out there teaching your child things that they don't need to know yet. Praise be the name of the Lord. This is why you guide your children from certain expose. Because you have to, uh, you have certain knowledge you want to impart into them in stages as they grow. Now, what you don't want to do is to expose them to some bunch of people and start feeding the child, messing the child's innocence mind you know to the degree whereby the child now grows and becomes so convoluted because why knowledge is a blessing but knowledge if it's not properly appropriated child of god it brings destruction praise be the name of the lord you see what satan does is uh, is, is to abort the learning curve so that he introduces something that will make you to diminish who you are the devil is a liar when god wants to to bring you into something higher than yourself. Praise be the name of the Lord. Child of the living God, you are who you are in God. No one should make you feel less than whom God have made you to be. Praise be the name of the Lord. And, uh, and this is where sometimes I've got a little bit of issue with the internet. Now, internet, praise God, has been a source of blessing in terms of research and all that kind of stuff. But internet, have also, internet has also become a source of self-delusion, praise God, uh, by which some measure themselves. Are we together here? Some, you know, have friends on the internet and they, they, you know, they, they, uh, they equate that as I am very important. I've got 1,000 friends on the internet. That is self-delusion. Some would claim to be what they are not on the internet and you will see them and feel god look at the car he's driving look at the house he's living look at how luxurious this, this person is you know enjoying life but what you fail to understand is the car that he has put on the on the internet is a borrowed car uh, you see? Uh, the house you know you know you are looking at so uh, you know so uh, exquisite it's not his either uh, now the clothes is putting on to make you believe that he has arrived actually i know he's are you listening to me and you are looking at that judging yourself we went to school together we we did that together god look how look how glamorous is looking look at my life the devil is a liar praise be the name of the lord because you don't understand that where i am doesn't make me praise god what i drive don't make me praise god what i own don't determine who i am you know who i I deal with don't determine who I am praise be the name of the Lord I don't have to mention names to make myself feel important yes some people they will say that person is my friend that is my friend no 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 I've only got one name his name is Yeshua Christ Jesus the Lord praise be the name of the Lord I don't have to mention nobody's name to make myself feel important I am important all by myself praise be the name of the Almighty God anyone who chooses 
choose anyone who chooses to evaluate him or herself by irrational standard, you know, can be uh, pursuing self-destructive goals. Are you listening to me now? Because you allow yourself to be driven by the negative, by the, by the negativity in which you feel on the inside. Child of the living God, I will be coming to close shortly. Uh, what you must understand is, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, that God by himself has given me the value that I deserve. Praise be the name of the almighty God. And now when you understand who you are and what God have done for you, you will be as comfortable as you will be, uh, you know, in the midst of billions years. You also be as comfortable as you should be when you're in the midst of homeless people. Praise be the name of the Lord. In other words, I don't have to impress anybody to prove how good I am. I don't have to prove anything to anybody to make you feel, to make you believe that I am important. Why? Because I know whom God have made me to be. Why? Because I know, you know, who my God is. I know that God has put value upon my life. Anybody who puts his son on the cross for me has already given me my value. If God could put his son on the cross for me to be able to bring me into sonship, Oh, Shada Bahaya. He has already placed my value on me. I know where my value is. Praise be the name of the Lord. I already know where my value is. I know where my value is. Oh, praise be the name of the Almighty God. My value is not in what I drive. My value is not in what I spend. My value is not what is, is, is not in the house that I leave. Matter of fact, I put value in the car when I drive it. I, want, I put value in the home because I live there. I put value in the clothes because I put them on. Uh, praise be the name of the Lord. I put value in the bus. Should I go into the bus? If I go into the bus, the bus does not diminish who I am. If I go into the train, it does not diminish who I am. That is a valuable man in the train. The valuable man in the bus. Are you listening to me now? Uh, praise be the name of the Lord. So whatever it is that this world has to provide, don't put value on me. I have value. And that value emanates from what God had done. The blood of Jesus shed on the cross on my behalf. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. A lot of people have gone into depression because they feel they are valueless. I have come to tell you, he's placed value on you. You got to know what your value is. Oh, glory to God. When you look at the account of the woman, you know, uh, I think John chapter 4, Bible says that this woman, she came by the well to get some water. You know, the, uh, I think she's a woman of Samaria. Now, Jesus came there strategically, you know, because he was trying to impact destiny. Now, when he came there and he said to the woman, can, you, can I give me something to drink? The woman said, how dare you, Jew, asking me, a Samaria woman, to give you water to drink? Because at this time, the Jew and the Samaria were not really in good terms. Glory to God. And uh, Jesus said, well, you know, I've got the water that I can give you. And that water, she do take that water, you will never thirst again. And the woman saw it as, you know what? I will need that water. That will save me the trouble of bringing pots to draw water from this well every time. Glory to God. You just say, well, you know, then in course of their Q&A and the and conversation, it became evident that Jesus was speaking on a higher level. And after that, the woman said, Jesus said, okay, go and, bring, you know, go and call your husband. But the woman was so honest, you know. Sometimes we, come, we don't come to God with honesty. And then uh, God said, Jesus said, well, you are so, you know, you, you've said the truth that you haven't got no husband. And Jesus said, you know, that's good. Matter of fact, you, you know, you, know uh, you, have with, you are with the fifth husband. You know, I think the sixth one, actually, you know, is never your husband. So in other words, all these men, none of them are your husband. And uh, imagine that kind of a woman in the community, beloved. She's in that community, but the truth is, she's been seen as a devalued woman. As she's devalued. I mean, you look at it this way. If you know a woman in your community right now who has had maybe six husbands, I'm sure you're going to have some 
uh, uh, some opinion, you know, that, ah, oh, please, six husbands, unbelievable, and things like that. But this woman had been through that. But Jesus said to her, I can give you this water, and you will never thirst again. And after all the conversation, child of God, she encountered Christ, and she went back into the city. The Bible records she became the greatest evangelist of all times. Glory to God. You know? If you go to your community now, for instance, and then you say, oh, I brought you a word from God. They say, you? After six husbands, please. What are we going to tell me? But when you encounter Christ, and you encounter your value, it changes everything from the inside. It changes everything from the inside. I've just stopped by here this afternoon to let you understand. It doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter what you have gone through. Praise God. It doesn't matter what you are dealing with right now. You must understand where your value comes from. Your value is tied to your self-esteem. How do you feel on the inside? How do you feel on the inside? You know, somebody, somebody, somebody will tell you, I will become more uh, of this if I have money. I will become more of that if I have money. I've learned something about money. Money makes you more of who you are already. Money don't change you. Money just highlights who you are. When a man, if you want to know a good man, give him money, praise God. You see his goodness become so enormous. But if you, have to, if you have to see a man who is so full of himself, pride, cocky, and all of that, evil, wicked, when he have money, he become more of those. So money makes you more of who you are. Money doesn't change you. And as I tell you, people don't change. Money highlights who they are. Praise God. So if you see a man with the heart of angel, when you give him money, he become a blessing to his community. When you see an evil man, when you give him money, he becomes devious to his community. Praise God. So money makes you more of who you are. So child of God, money don't put value on you. Are we together here? What put value on you is the finished work of redemption. Jesus went to, cross, went to the cross. God sent Christ Jesus to the cross to die for you and I. And that death on the cross now tells me the value that is upon my life. And that's the reason why there's nothing this world can give and there's nothing this world can take that can regulate the value of God upon your life. Praise be the name of the Lord. So there's already a value upon your life by the finished work of redemption. Are we together here? I pray that you will understand this. And it will change your feelings. It will change the way you think. It will change the way you see yourself. And make you better for it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please, you must understand that the blood of Jesus speaks on your behalf. It advocates for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. That blood speaks for you at every gate of life. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. That blood of Jesus speaks and brings you victory. In the mighty name of Jesus. And because of that blood, praise be the name of the Lord. You walk in power. You walk in victory. You are head. You are not tail. You are, you are above and you are never beneath. Because of that blood, mighty God in heaven. You know, you walk in your high places. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because of that blood, you are far from shame. You are far from harassment. In the mighty name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus speaks, Bible says, uh, that it speaks, Bible says in the, book, in the book of Genesis, that the blood of Abel speaks better things than the blood. Jesus, the blood of Jesus speaks better things, praise be the name of the Lord. It speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Better things. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. So God's value is already on your life. Let no man talk you down, try to diminish you. No. Your value is not in the notes. 
your value is based on the finished work of redemption. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. 